Hello and welcome to Tech of the Month, the show where we bring you the last four weeks in tech news and reviews. So this month we have brand new SRAM rival ETAP Access, Victoria Airliners, we have lots of wheel sets. So we've got a wheel set from Parkours and also some Campact Nola wheels to talk about, as well as Zip wheels. And as our Bike of the Month, we have the Ribble CGR AL. April has been a real month for relaunched wheel sets. One of the wheel sets we saw relaunched was the Zip 353 NSW. Now, the NSW has been the wheel set for quite some time with the wavy profile. Zip call it Sawtooth. The idea is it's meant to lend stability in the crosswinds. Now, Zip, which is owned by SRAM, didn't provide any wind tunnel data with this wheel set. Instead, it says it's focusing more on an all-round performance. Uh, and it also says that these wheels may not be necessarily faster in straight line speed when compared with the more entry level wheels, the uh, 303S and the 303 Firecrest that it relaunched last year. What is more important in this case is the crosswind stability. Uh, and it's also passed on some of the technology that was released last year with the 303S and the 303 Firecrest. Uh, and that is a wider internal rim depth, which is there to allow you to run a wider tire and Zip has also launched these as a hookless rim set. Uh, with the ETRTO guidelines as it currently is, that means that your maximum pressure is 72 PSI. It's possible that may change in the future, but not right now. And it does also limit your tyre choice somewhat. One of the benefits there is actually cost base in that hookless rims are cheaper to produce. There's actually less wastage in the manufacturing process. Uh, and usually that benefit is passed on to the customer. Now this is not by any means an entry level wheel set. These come in at £3,200. So they have come down in price, but clearly comparative to the 303S, which I have been using on new rival and I'm really impressed by. Clearly these are not by any means an entry level wheel set. So these come in at 1225 grams for a set. That is without rim tape and without valves, uh, but it is a reduction in weight on the previous iteration. Now, another wheel set that came out in April was the Campag Bora Ultra. Uh, Campagnolo has not gone hookless. They say it's because of the limitations of ETRTO and tires. So they've kept a hooked rim. What is exciting about these is that they have hidden aero nipples. They have a fancy name, but effectively the plate is hidden away inside the rim and the spoke then goes directly into that. So you don't see it at all. Uh, the wheels do come with uh, a special spoke tension key so you can adjust spoke tension yourself uh, and each set will come available with that tool. However, you cannot uh, make an adjustment to this plate. Um, so Campagnolo said they are, they actually said, I quote, a nightmare to get in at the factory. They did, however, say they have been experimenting with this technology for some time. This is an evolution on the previous version. Uh, they are, again, disc brake only. So we're really keen to hear your comments on that. So they're available in three different depths. There is a 33 mil at 1,385 grams, a 45 mil at 1,425 grams, or a 60 mil at 15. 30 grams. What's really interesting is that Campag actually went for a narrower rim width on its more aero wheels. So on the 45 and the 60, which you're going to be buying for aerodynamic efficiency versus the 33, which you would buy generally as a climber, they've actually gone for a 19 millimeter internal width. Uh, and they said they found this more aerodynamic. Now, I don't have a wind tunnel to test these different theories, but it's interesting to see that brands are adopting very, very different approaches. Last month, Mark Cavendish won four stages at the Tour of Turkey. Now, it's really a familiar sight to see him winning again, which is really great. Um, but we spotted some unfamiliar sunglasses on him. Now, these glasses, these Oakley glasses, they were clearly Oakley, he's an Oakley-sponsored athlete still, um, had actually been seen in February last year, first of all, and then in October on Chris Froome and Sam Bennett. And we think that they're called the Oakley Cato. What's different about them is that they have a kind of a, um, like a nose lens by the look of it. It's like the lens goes all the way across like the, like the M-frame used to, but it, it sticks out over the nose. The picture that we saw of him, he actually, they, they look slightly wonky. <laughs> I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> and it's, uh, 
making us wonder whether there's just one nose size. I mean, if there's a, a nose lens, how do you make it in different sizes? Now, this next launch is something that I was really excited about. Endura, the Scottish clothing brand, has teamed up with Phil Burt. Now, Phil Burt was the British cycling physiotherapist for over 10 years. He's really experienced and he's worked with the Team GB riders on specifically on saddle comfort an awful lot. Uh, Endura contacted him because they wanted to develop a new women's short. And you do hear many stories of women trying out cycling and just giving up because they're so uncomfortable, which is not something that we want at all. They created a chamois that uses a medical grade silicon elastomer, and that is embedded in a liquid form inside the existing foam. But you still want foam because it has to wick sweat and be breathable. Uh, silicon generally isn't known for that, uh, but it is much firmer. And for women who are finding that the saddle is really uncomfortable, I really think it could be a game changer. They retail at $129.99, available in sizes extra small to extra large. And I will bring a full review to the website soon. Now we're going to have a look at some of the reviews we've been publishing recently. And I'm going to kick off with my review of the TI Rally 40th anniversary bike. So yes, it's 41 years and not 40 since Joub Zotemilk won the Tour de France now. Um, but I think with this bike, it's definitely a case of better late than never. Some retro enthusiasts said it was a shame that this bike was made in Taiwan and not in the UK. Um, and you have to agree with them really in, in some ways, but let's not forget that the actual tubing, the 753, which was specially commissioned by Rally, was actually made by Reynolds in their Birmingham factory. The ride quality was, was actually really beautiful, regardless of where it was made. The price of £2,500, which includes the lovely 753 frame and lots of carefully selected and very shiny components, is actually pretty good considering that this is a, a, a rare bike already. It's very collectible, it has a lovely ride quality and it's a real head turner. I gave it 8 out of 10, which I think is a, is a fair score. I finally published the review of my Basso Diamante. Now, it's been a really long-term review. The bike arrived with me around a year ago, and I've used it as a test bed when comparing other products. There are so many things that I really loved about this bike. It's got nice, short, snappy 400mm chainstays, and its geometry is very much of an aggressive race bike, as nearly every review of this bike calls out. It is really stiff. I actually found it compliant enough as well in that it's, it's definitely a stiff frame, but I found it more than comfortable for long 150k rides down to the coast. So when I finally came to strip it down in order to write the review, I popped it on the scales and it came in at 1,155 grams. And that's really not light by any means when you compare it to most of the disc brake road bikes that came out in the last couple of years. Uh, it, the weight isn't, I couldn't find it anywhere on Basso's website. And when I asked them what their claimed weight is, they did say 1,100 grams. Uh, at first I thought I might have some broken scales or I was making some sort of error. Uh, and just when you compare it to other, it is the lightweight bike in the stable. Uh, the SV is the aero bike, so can't really justify it by the fact that it's the aero bike within the range. Um, and unfortunately that kind of let it down a little bit. Uh, I also got quite a bit of disc brake rub during testing. And again, the disc brake mounts weren't entirely flat. So that was uh, another bit of a problem really for a frame set that comes in at £3,099. That said, I mean, I've been running it for a year. I'm still in the same bottom bracket. Um, so many, many other parts of the bike were really excellent. So loads of loads of pluses, but the weight just let it down. Um, and that bit of disc brake rub kind of got on my nerves. Um, so it got a seven out of 10. We reviewed the Specialized Recon 2.0 shoes, which are aimed at more adventurous riding where you might need a little bit of extra off the bike maneuverability. They have a flexible forefoot that makes walking around really easy, but pedaling efficiency isn't at all compromised, which is great. They're really comfortable for cycling long distances. Maybe the, the one niggle that we had was that they're quite high volume compared to other shoes, and the Velcro strap on the toe didn't quite hold the foot in place. So um, that was only really a, a small thing, and so we gave them nine out of 10. So I have had on test for the last couple of weeks the brand new SRAM Rival ETEP Access. I think it's really exciting to see one of the group set brands really trickling down the technology that it has put onto its top end group sets. So we saw SRAM Red ETAP Access come out back in 2019. SRAM Force came very soon after, and we now have it at rival level. What will be interesting to see if the result is that Shimano maybe looks at having a, a 105 Di2. That will be certainly something that we're watching now. 
Of course, we are aware that not everyone wants an electronic group set uh, and they are more expensive and they also are a little bit heavier. So perhaps people would rather 105 stays mechanical. Let us know in the comments, It'd be interesting to find out. Now on this group set, the functionality is pretty much identical. And the difference between this rival and the force in terms of shifting, uh, braking, you, you can't feel the difference. There, there is not a lot. The difference is in the material. So there is more aluminium and less carbon used. The levers are very slightly smaller than they are on SRAM Red and SRAM Force. And that is because there is a bit less adjustment, but you still do have reach adjustment. I think that's the important one. But also SRAM hasn't added in the technology needed for blip buttons. So you can't have sprint buttons and you can't um, set this up in a, t a TT setup, which would require Require those, but that's not really the market that Rival is aimed at, so I don't really see that being a problem. What is really interesting is that uh, they have added this power meter. Um, you can get the SRAM Rival crank set with a power meter, or you could just upgrade one um, by buying the left hand crank for £230. Uh, it's a single sided. The other thing that I do really like about this group set is that the rear mech comes in at £236. Uh, and that is a, a big step. It is, yeah, it's more expensive than a mechanical one, but it is a real step down from what you're seeing at Red and Force. So I just, I think if you are a Red or Force owner, I mean, they are cross compatible, then now knowing you can get a rear mech for 236 pounds rather than the, the lofty prices that they were previously, I think is, is pretty good. For the first time, it's gone, Rival's gone 12 speed as well, is that right? Exactly, yeah, you have got your 12 gears at the back and you have got the X range gearing that you have on Red and Force. So in this setup, you have got a lower than one to one ratio. So this bike is actually spec'd up with a 4633 and a 1036 on the back, which is massive. And to be honest, I live in a valley and I've quite enjoyed it. There's 20% climbs in every direction to leave the house. Uh, and it's actually been quite nice. So how much heavier is it than Red and Force? This group set has come under fire quite a bit for its weight. Now, obviously it depends on the million different combinations that you go for, what crank size you've gone for, which cassette you've gone for. Uh, but this two by setup comes in at around 3,200 grams. So it's 3.2 kilograms. Uh, and obviously the prices do vary depending on what different, um, whether you go for one buy or two buy. Uh, a two buy group set comes in at £1,313 without a power meter or £1,516 with a power meter. That is significantly cheaper than Force, which is well over £2,000. It is, of course, more expensive than Shimano 105, which comes in about um, £800 as an RRP and you can generally find it for about £500 but it is a lot cheaper than Ultegra Di2 so it almost creates a whole new category of built bike price. It's interesting I, I hope that it doesn't drive up the price of bikes that would have been 105 or rival. I hope that instead it either brings down the prices of Ultegra Di2 versus Force or just creates a whole new category. To me it seems looking at what's come out uh, soon after this launch is that brands are basically creating a whole new rivalry tap access category and it just gives the consumer one more thing to choose from which can't be a bad thing. This is the new parkour Ronda wheel. You can guess by the Tour of Flanders reference that it's designed for rough surfaces but it's also lightweight at 1400 grams and, and it's been wind tunnel tested too so it can pretty much do any surface and that's why parkour calls it an all-road wheel set. It's disc only and it's optimized for a 28 millimeter tire Although parkour say that it can accept anything from a 25 millimeter tire up to a 50 millimeter tire based on upcoming ETRTO guidelines. The rim has a, um, a pretty wide internal rim width of 22.5 millimeters, which is on, like the, in line with wide, wider modern wheel sets. Now the rim, the rim depth is actually, it has the, a differential rim profile. Each rim has a, has a slightly different shape. And this is based on parkour's research with Nottingham Trent University where they put marine anemometers on the front and rear hubs to test the, the wind angle coming at each point on the bike. And they discovered that the yaw angle at the front was 1.5 degrees higher than at the rear, just because of the way the, the air comes into the bike and then goes backwards. So the Ronda uses a blunter U-shaped rim at the front to optimize the, the higher yaw angles, while the rear gets a a, a, a V-shaped rim, which is actually a little bit deeper. The, the rear rim depth is 39 millimeters and the front is around 35. 
So we had a story quite recently about Parkour's most recent gravel wheel, and that was hookless. But I think with the road, it's not something they're a fan of yet. Parkour told me that um, that they wanted the, the rim to be compatible with all tyres, tubeless or clincher, um, just because all road means road as well as uh, as well as gravel, all surfaces. So. Um, so they are hooked, um, ordinary tubeless ready rims, um, but they can accept clinchers fine. And these Pirelli P0 race tyres that I've got on them at the moment are clincher only. Um, and they feel really nice on these wheels. I've ridden them so I haven't done loads of miles yet, but I'm in the middle of my test. And uh, I think for me, these wheels are, are hitting a kind of a, a sweet spot. You know, they've got the, um, the stability, the, the weight, um, they're wind tunnel tested. I, I, I could ride these all year round quite happily. So we looked at some pretty expensive wheels today. Uh, how how are the parkour wheels priced? Yeah, so these are quite a bit cheaper. They're £1,049. So watch out for my review of these. And now it's over to Stefan, who has some Vittoria tyre liners. So this week I've brought along the Vittoria airliner tyre inserts. Now, like so many things in road cycling, this is a technology that's been in the mountain biking world for quite a while now. But it's just starting to make that transition from the trails to the tarmac. Now, although tubeless tyres can be run at quite low pressures without increasing the risk of punctures, what this does mean is that if you come across a square-edged hit, like from a pothole or from a particularly large route out on the trails, is that you can blast through the cushioning that the tyre provides quite quickly and end up whacking a dent into your rims. And so the purpose of a tyre insert is to wrap around your rims and provide a dense foam barrier to protect against these kind of hits. Now it's worth noting that these don't take up all the space inside the tyre and so you can still adjust the pressures to get your preferred balance of comfort and rolling resistance as you would with any other tubeless setup. But another particular benefit that the Victoria airliners provide is that due to the protection they offer the rim and also the way that they lock the bead of the tyre onto the rim is that they can actually be ridden without any air in the tyres at all. Now this isn't advisable day to day, Victoria says that the inserts will only last around an hour ridden in this way. But if you've got a puncture that the sealant just won't fix to get you home, it's a great option to have. Usually when running tubeless, it's still a good idea to bring an inner tube as backup, just in the off chance that you do get a puncture that won't seal. But with the airliners installed, it'll be possible to ditch the inner tubes entirely. And on the off chance that you do get a puncture, you'd still be able to ride home even without any air in the tyres. Now, a road-specific version of the airliners recently came out, and the smallest allows you to use the system with a 25mm tyre, and the insert itself only weighs 24 grams. And between the larger sizes of the road inserts and the gravel inserts, you're covered for all tyre widths all the way up to 40mm wide. But then there's currently a little bit of a gap in the range as you switch into the mountain bike-specific version of the airliners. The smallest of the mountain bike liners covers tyres all the way from 48mm wide up to 57mm. And so there's currently a little bit of a gap between tyres that are 40mm wide and 48mm wide, which don't have an airliner provided for them. Now, one of the many benefits of the tubeless system is that it's genuinely been lighter weight than a setup with an inner tube. But now when you factor in the slightly beefier build of tubeless tyres and the weight of the sealant and the weight of the airliners inserted into the system, the total weight is going to be quite similar to that of a traditional clincher setup with a butyl inner tube. But then again, for the promise of effective immunity from punctures, I think it's a fair trade to make. But at the price of around £65 for a set of two of the road liners and around £70 for the gravel liners, they're essentially the price of a fresh new set of tyres. And particularly if they have to be replaced after one hour of riding them flat, it's a lot more expensive a solution than just using an inner tube. So I think the value really comes down to just how expensive your wheels are in the first place. If your rims are just £30 a pop, there might not be much point in the added protection that the Vittoria airliners provide. But if you've spent a load on expensive carbon rims, then it's probably a sensible idea to provide a bit more protection for them. So I'll set these up in a bit of an all-road guise with 32mm tyres and a fairly minimal tread. And I think that this complements the qualities of the inserts quite well. On fairly rough off-road sections, I get the protection that a larger tyre would offer, but then on the road, I get the benefits of the lower rolling resistance that a 32mm wide tyre has over, say, a 50mm tyre. I think it could be the best of both worlds, but I'll just have to put in the miles riding it and see how it works out. So this month for May, we have the Ribble CGR AL. 
So Ribble's actually just announced its new gravel range of bikes, um, and that is a very completely gravel specific focus. Whereas the CGR, it's been around for some time and CGR stands for cross gravel road. So the idea is that you could have this bike pretty much as you'll do it all. You can swap the wheel sets. Uh, you could ride it easily on the road. You could just swap tires, um, ride it on the road um, and then take it off the road when whenever you get the opportunity. Um, the AL frame comes in um, various different specs from 999. This is the GRX edition, which starts at 1899. Um, this is actually wearing the Mavic all-road wheels as opposed to the standard Axioms and that costs you an extra £50. So this is a GRX 600 build. So you've got your GRX shifters, you've got a really nice flared bar there. Um, they are alloy, alloy level bars with an um, alloy stem as well um, and um, aluminium seat post too. Uh, it's a one by setup and in this case you've got a 42 front chain ring with 1136 at the rear which really should give you everything you need um, off-road and on the road as well I mean you would have some fairly big jumps between gears but you should be pretty well set up it's got uh, hydraulic brakes with 160 mil rotors on the front and the rear it's got some pretty serious clearance there hasn't it on on the front there it's like yeah, you've got a lot of space. So there is, you can run it either with a 650B or a 700 wheel. Uh, and in this case, we've got Schwalbe Pro 1 all-road tyres, and those are in 40 mil. But you have, Ribble says clearance for up to 47 mil. I'd be interested to see, and that's with a 650B wheel. I'd be interested to see if you can get a little bit more in there. Uh, and one thing I do really like about Ribble is they have this bike builder capacity. So you can choose, you choose your frame and then you build your own spec up. So you can choose your crank length, you can choose your handlebar width, you can use your saddle. Uh, I really wish more brands would do that. It, it effectively it reduces wastage because you're not buying stuff that you don't need and then replacing it. Uh, and it reduces the cost for the consumer because you're not having to replace components that don't fit you from the get-go. And I really like that that system is available and I'd, I'd love to see more brands do it. So the weight of this bike with this spec is 10.05 kg. And it's not featherweight by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think that's really what this bike is about. It's about just chilling out off-road, enjoying yourself um, and, and getting out those winter miles. So yeah, seems, um, seems like it'll be a really fun one to test. That was Tech of the Month for May. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. And if you did like this video, do hit like and subscribe if you wanna see more of our videos. Catch you later. <laughs>